Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Winecast. At long last, we finally made it. We've made it all the way up the Loire, which, thanks to its strong currents and abundant sandbars, is no small feat, by the way, to the wine regions nearest its headwaters. That, in contrast to the Lower and Middle Loire, are collectively known as the Upper Loire. Or are they? There's actually a small controversy, or maybe just issue would be better, about how the regions should be identified with the key point of contention being whether the 12 appellations that make up the region should be identified together as the Upper or Haute Loire, or whether they should be divided into two areas with the four southernmost keeping the name Haute or Upper Loire, and the eight northernmost going by the Centre or Centre Loire. Mostly for simplicity's sake, I favor using a single term to talk about the entire area. And I have to confess, I find it unhelpful to refer to one area as the center Loire when you already have a middle Loire somewhere else. It's not that the term center is unjustified here, as it doesn't refer to this region's place along the Loire, where it's definitely not in the center, but to its place in a French administrative district with the same name, because it's near the center of France. I just find it confusing, and I opt not to use it. The various sources I consulted when preparing this cast went with one or the other, and while I'm sure consensus will develop around one of them at some point, that hasn't happened yet. Still, however you feel about the specific names for the regions, or about the virtue of simplicity, there is something to splitting up this region into two, if only in your mind. First, there's a gap between them, as you can see on the map, and while the eight appellations up north aren't all contiguous with each other, they do seem to huddle together relative to the four down south. Also, the wine cultures of northern and southern Appalachians are distinct from each other, with the northern Appalachians crafting wines based largely on Sauvignon Blanc and, to a lesser but still very important extent, Pinot Noir, while the southern Appalachians tend to make wines from Chardonnay and Gamay. Finally, there's a very real difference both in France but especially abroad regarding how well known the wines that come from these regions are. Though some northern Appalachians are only now becoming a thing in international markets, the northern part of the Upper Loire is home to Appalachians like Sancerre and Puy Fumé that are arguably the best-known wines in the entire Loire, beating out even Chinon, Vouvray, and Muscadet in terms of name recognition. By contrast, the southern Appalachians are little known, even in their home country. Of these differences, the most important for us to focus on is the difference in wine culture, and here that boils down in large part to a difference in grapes used. Historically, this region was planted mostly to Chasselas, a white grape you might remember from the cast on Alsace, where it plays a minor role appearing both in blends and as a varietal wine, and it continues to be important in Swiss wine culture. Chasselas reign here came to an end, though, with phylloxera, and after that blight, many vineyard owners made the decision to replant with Sauvignon Blanc, a hardy grape that does well in this, the most unambiguously harsh and continental of all the Loire's climates. Sauvignon Blanc is the dominant grape of the region, if you're thinking just in terms of hectares planted. But there's only a little bit planted in the southern Appalachians, where Chardonnay is the grape that took up the slack. Sassy supports Chardonnay in one southern Appalachian, and despite the ups and downs it's gone through, there's one northern Appalachian that makes its whites exclusively from Chasselas. Pinot and Gamay are the two reds for the region, with Pinot showing up both in the north and the south, and Gamay only in the south, but usually pulling most of the weight there. Pinot Gris and Sauvignon Gris both play supporting roles in various wines. Breaking things down appellation by appellation, when it comes to the northern apps, Sancerre and Puy Fumé are the best known by far. Puy Fumé produces only whites that are 100% Sauvignon Blanc, and the whites that Sancerre produces are also Soft Blanc, a grape that locally is known as Blanc Fumé. Fumé means something like smoky, and I've heard various explanations for why the name got attached both to this region and to this grape. Probably the most popular one you'll hear is that the wines made from Sauve Blanc and Puy Fumé have a particularly smoky or gunflint-like quality to them. But I've also heard that the grapes in the region develop a grayish bloom that coats them and makes the fruit look, well, smoky. Or that Fumé is actually a reference to morning fog that settles, smoke-like, in the area. You'll have to pay your money and pick your poor as to which of these you want to go with. 
Like I said a moment ago, Sancerre makes Sauve Blanc that is highly renowned, like Puy Fumé, for its intense green aromatics, and both are considered a benchmark of style for Sauvignon Blanc. Sancerre also makes reds and rosés, but only a little bit, about 10 and 6% of total production respectively. All of it is Pinot Noir, and it's generally considered very elegant. Chateau Mayon is in the same French department, sort of like a county, as the other northern appellations, so it's usually lumped together with them. But spiritually, it belongs in the south, with its reds and rosés being made from Gamay and Pinot Noir, with some Pinot Gris occasionally in the pinks. Coteau du Génois makes whites from Sauve Blanc and reds from rosés from Pinot Noir and Gamay. Monitou Salon makes its wines in the same style as Sancerre, Sauve Blancs and Pinot Noir. Puy sur Loire takes in exactly the same area as Puy Fumé, but only produces whites from Chasselas. Little Cancy, definitely don't say Quincy, was the first appellation to be granted AOC status in the Loire way back in 1936, and it makes only whites from Sauve Blanc with a little help from Sauve Gris. And finally, Réouilly largely follows the Sancerre formula of making whites out of Sauve Blanc and reds and rosés from Pinot Noir, though in Réouilly's case, Pinot Gris can help out on the rosés. To the south, in saint pourçon whites are mostly but not exclusively Chardonnay, with some Sassy and occasionally some Sauvignon Blanc. Reds are about Pinot Noir and Gamay, and the rosés are all Gamay. South of saint pourçon the Côte d'Auvergne is all shard for its whites, while reds and pinks there split Gamay and Pinot Noir, with Gamay by law having to be the dominant partner in the blend. The eastern half of the area has soils that are granite-based, while limestone is the major player in the western soils. And Gamay does very well on granite soils, so it's no surprise that both the appellations on the east side, Côte Roanaise and Côte du Forêt, only produce reds from Gamay. Despite the favorable soil, though, quality production here has been stymied by the particular type of Gamay grown, a local variant called Gamay Saint-Roman. Saint-Roman is a particularly vigorous version of Gamay, which, while great for yields, isn't usually considered great for flavor. Finally, Gamay here, in contrast to up north, tends to be vinified using semi-carbonic maceration. As a final consideration, now that we've made our way up the entire Loire, it's worth noting that in contrast to other major French wine regions, there's no single AOC that covers the whole area. This is remarkable for its uniqueness, but also for what it says about the Loire as a concept. Though its 70 plus sub AOCs are lumped together administratively, it's so vast and geographically and climatically so different that it doesn't make much sense to create a way to pull grapes from all over the area into a single quality wine. The closest you'll get to a general AOC, interestingly, isn't for a still wine at all, but for Cremant de Loire, that can pull grapes from all over the Middle Loire, but not the Pénante or the Upper Loire. Still, AOC production is where it's at in the Loire, with about three quarters of all production falling under this rubric. There is an IGP and various sub-IGPs for the region, the Val de Loire IGP, but they account for just under 14% of production and the rest is taken up by wine, just classified as Vin de France. Thanks again for joining me for another wine cast and for making it all the way through this four-part series with me. There's more France in the pipeline, but even I might be in need of a little break, so the topic for the next cast is currently just about as big a mystery to me as it is to you. If you enjoyed this cast and found it helpful, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're on Instagram, please follow me there at Unknown Winecaster Drinks Wine. I'm your host, the Unknown Winecaster, and I'm out. Enjoy the grape, but always enjoy it responsibly. <laughs>